Chris, sort of a two-part question for you around all that, just is when you're in rebuild mode, it obviously isn't a lot of fun. How do you know when it's time to flip the switch and say, okay, now, now we're going to add seven UFAs and it, it's time to go? And just how much more fun is it when you finally do flip that switch and, and really get competitive? Well, the, the guy who flips the switch is uh, that, that's Steve Eiserman. So yeah. that's, uh, that's, that's where it comes from. But you know what? I think, you know, Going into, you know, free agency last summer, I think we felt, you know, we, we had players that we were going to target, um, you know, and obviously we just named, uh, you know, a, a big bunch of the guys that, that we did target and, and were able to bring them in. And, and we just, you know, lo- love the character and love the compete of, of the players that we brought in. So, you know, I think, um, you know, I, I, I think – Derek Lalonde has done a great job with, with, with expectations of this team. Obviously Stevie has, uh, you know, as, as well, but in the end, when you, when you add players and, and all of a sudden you, you get some depth within your organization, you know, now all of a sudden I think, you know, the players in that dress room get, get, get excited. You know, we lost Tyler Bertuzzi for, uh, for, for about a month. And, you know, if that happened last year, that would have been a big hole for, for our team. But, you know, when you go out and you sign some free agents and you get some of the younger players that are pushing, it was a great opportunity for Jonathan Bergeron to come up. And, you know, he's come up and, and he's produced, uh, you know, on the power play. He's he's added some, you know, some skill and some speed and some hockey sense to, to our top nine. And all of a sudden we have some depth within the organization. So I think that's really you know, how you look at it, you know, when, when all of a sudden you, you, you have, you know, a, a core group and, and we mentioned the Larkins and the Bertuzzi's and then all of a sudden you have an, a, an opportunity to add, you know, to, to that roster. And then you have some good young players that are coming through and, and that's, you know, the, the Raymonds and the Siders, um, you know, the Rasmussen is still, you know, young and he, he took a big step last year. You know, we get an injury, we're able to call up Jonathan Bergeron and he's able to play in our top nine and play on our second power play and produce some points for us. So, um, you know, with all that said, I think that, um, you know, you, you get the players that are excited in that dressing room and they go out and, and they believe in themselves. And that's the fun part of, 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 you know, playing this game, you know, when you have a great group and you have guys that, you know, are going to dig in and battle and compete. And, and right now we're in, we're in a good spot, but we also know there's, uh, there's a lot of hockey to be played. You know, we're still in the month of November. We're joined by four-time Stanley Cup champion and director of amateur scouting for Detroit, Chris Draper. You mentioned Cider, and we know, like, there is a premium on defense. Nobody knows that more than probably Kyle Dubas and Leaf Nation here. So what does a guy like Cider mean to you? And, and watching tonight, for people that still don't know him as well as they should, we know he was Rookie of the Year, but what do you see in him? Where is... Where is he in terms of um, overall play uh, compared to what you've seen currently or even years past for you, Chris? Um, you know what? Um, Mo is, he's, he's, a, he's a complete defenseman. Um, you know, he plays in all situations for us. He, uh, he, he eats minutes. He's in our top pair with Ben Sherratt. Um, You know, obviously tonight they're, uh, they're going to get challenged. You know, they're going to see a lot of, a lot of hockey against, you know, Matthews and Marner. And, and I think, you know, for, for, for a young player like that, you know, these are the, the challenges that you get excited about. But, um, you know, he's, he's, like I said, he's on the power play. He's on the penalty kill. You know, he plays in all situations. He plays against everybody. Um, you know, there's a physical presence that, that Mo brings. And, and he's just that demon that, you know, you're kind of looking up and down the bench and, and you can't wait to get him out on the ice, uh, you know, playing 20-plus minutes a night for us. And like I said, playing in all situations. So, um, you know, he's been, he's been great, uh, you know, for us, obviously last year, uh, you know, anytime you can, you know, come into the league and, and, and become rookie of the year, obviously, you know, there's a lot of expectations and, and, you know, coming into your sophomore year, um, you know, you just have to go out and you have to continue to develop. And, and I think Ben Sherrod has been really good for, you know, for him, um, a little bit of a calming influence and, and they obviously are our top pair. So, you know, when you get a guy like Moritz Sider, um, you know, a big right shot D man, uh, a guy that can play in all situations. He's somebody that, uh, you know, you, you, you love to have in your organization and, and you can't wait to get him out on the ice, you know, 20 plus minutes every night against the other team's top lines. And, 
and that's something that um, you know he looks forward to. He, he knows there's challenges uh, playing against you know the best of the best night in and night out. But you know the the way you know Mo is wired and 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 the challenges that he wants, you know he embraces those challenges. He's just a he's an unreal kid on and off the ice, and uh, he's charismatic and and uh, you know we're obviously uh, you know proud of of having the the rookie of the year and everything that he does for us.